it's written with June. We have some books to read for you today. Sometimes our books can just be stories, and other times our books can be non-fictions. That means real life stories about things that have happened to us. We've read books about Black and British. I think we're reading something about Windrush, and we have other books slotted out as our non-fiction books. And we also have a friction slot where we read books and read stories most of the time. Fox tells stories from Africa and the Caribbean. Join us every time while we read. You will have fun. Please like, share, and comment on our channel. Spread the word. We love reading to keep on reading with June. Our website is called Info Hub Me. You can join us on adventure of reading free books. You can join us on adventure of learning more about our culture. You can join us on the adventure of having a special read pal around the globe. You join them together and you have a reading and a fun time session. Visit our website today. Subscribe to us. Join our membership creative club. See you as you have fun on today's episode of Reading with you. Hi there. Welcome to Reading with Joan. And today we're going to start from where Chippenham stop in the book Windows. I'm reading chapters 5 and 6. Chapter 5, Settling Down. Another big challenge for the Windows arrivals was finding a place to live. Once they had found jobs, they had to leave back on South Peak Level Shop. But many white people didn't want to rent rooms to black. But Mr. and Mrs. Thomas saw an advertisement for nutrients and treating South London. Mr. Thomas phoned an advance to inform the landlady that he wasn't English. But when he arrived, he was refused to leave. The landlady didn't mind renting the room to a foreign, but she didn't want to rent to a black Many of the Windrush newcomers had a similar experience. It wasn't because they didn't have the money to pay the rent or because of anything they had. They were refused somewhere to live simply because they were black. Not everyone who had sailed on the Windrush planned to stay in Britain for me. Some people just wanted to work hard, make money, and then return to the Caribbean where the living conditions there in Those who did end up staying came together to develop their own community. They formed their own churches and they were often made to feel unwelcome in the white British Christian church. Others use an African Caribbean saving method to help others so they didn't need to go for a bank. They didn't need to go to banks for them. Some managed to buy their own houses and would spend rent spare rooms to other Caribbean. Had to sit before the winter. The winter this was not the first ship to bring Caribbean people to this map of it. On March 1947, the SS Ormond Moon brought more than 100 Caribbean immigrants to the Then in December 1947, six months before the arrival of the Windrush, the SS Almorinda Al brought around 200 Caribbean immigrants to Southampton. One of, those, one of those on board was a young man named Alan Wilder. Here is a picture of Alan. Alan, like Sam, had so written during. Alan came off from a well off family in Jamaica. Many of the Caribbean people who came before and later on the Windrush were well educated, talented people. Alan, like Sam, had served Britain during the Second World. Now he was returning during peacetime, but things were different. People said to him, The war is over. What are you doing here? Ended up for a time, hungry, homeless, and without a job. What I learned about today is more about the Windrush, how again more people were treated, and about shit that came way before the Windrush. I learned that how people People were treated badly because of their color. Thank you for reading with reading.
Hi kids. Ah, I hope you had fun with last week's story on Beyonce tricking three kings. Uh, today we are reading another story, and this time is titled Ah, Story from the Caribbean. That's what we're still reading. Today's special story is called The Special Pumpkin. It's a story based on a folk tale of my Mama was old and she knew it. Mama was old and she knew it. Her hair was thinning and was was left out grey. Her body ached and she she could hardly walk. Her husband had died years before, and her sons his, and their wives and their children moved away from where they lived to far off countries. Mama had no visitors, save her greedy neighbor, Madam Jocelyn. Madam. Jocelyn could only pass by Mama's house to show how good her life was and tell Mama how well her children are doing and how often they visited her. Mama Jocelyn liked to brag about all sorts of things. Often she would brag to Mama about all the different vegetables she was growing in the garden. She knew well that Mama's garden was no longer both fruit or vegetable. Watercress was the only thing that grew in Mama's garden these days. Mama just listened to Mama, Madam Jocelyn with an open heart and never asked for anything. Madam Jocelyn never offered Mama anything either, even though she knew that all Mama had to eat was wild watercress. So, Mama ate watercress stew, watercress soup, watercress pie, watercress cake, and dreamed of all the wonderful fruits and vegetables she used to eat when she was younger when our garden was full. Mama could dream about eating juicy mango and plugging plum right down to the seed or eating soup salt or breadfruit or even a hearty chicken soup with ducklings and fresh fish and johnny cakes but mama never grumbled instead she rejoiced with her family and had many fond memories so when madam jocelyn visited mama empty-handed mama just smiled and wished a neighbor well one day mama was sitting on the veranda when a tiny beautiful bird landed at her feet. The bird's wings had feathers, the colors of turquoise sea blue, like what I'm putting on, and some feathers of a color of a warm orange sunset, like the color of a banner. There's orange there. Kids, can you find it? What a beautiful bird, she said to herself, and how lovely she could have chosen to spend the moment with me. But when the old lady looked closer at the bird, she noticed that one of the wings on the bird was broken. Feeling sorry for the bird, Madam picked it up carefully, not as not to hurt its fragile body, and tenderly put it against her chest to keep it warm and safe. There, she said, now don't you worry, I will take care of you. And that was what Mama did. Every day, she gave the bird a clean water to drink and shared with it her watercress. She kept the bird safe, away from hand, and it grew to love it with all her heart. She sang to it every day. Beautiful bird, beautiful bird, I will make you strong. Beautiful bird, beautiful bird, I will make you strong. Can't you just imagine mama singing as she's taking care of a bird? Beautiful bird, beautiful bird, I will make you strong. Okay, let's read on. Slowly and slowly, the bird began to get stronger and stronger and gradually the broken wings began to heal. Finally, one day, the bird's wings was well enough for it to fly again. Mama watched the bird fly around her all day long and finally, she decided it was time to let the bird go. The old woman had enjoyed the company but she knew that the best thing for the bird was to let it fly into the sky. So one day, she put the bird on the palm of her hands and said, Go little bird. The little bird flew away into the sky and gently slaps gently flapping his wings. With the bird gone, Mama was once again lonely, except from the occasional visit from her greedy neighbor, Madam Jocelyn. Mama would often look up to the tree to see if her friend, the beautiful blue and orange bird, was passing, but it never came back. Mama didn't grumble. She was thankful that she shared a lovely time with the bird and enjoyed the memory. Then, to Mama's surprise, one day, she was sitting 
watching the sky come up. She heard a gentle flapping wings above her head. Then she looked up. It was none other than the beautiful blue and orange bird that she had nursed. She was so glad that the bird had come back. But a bird had not come to stay. Instead, he dropped something from its beak and flew away again. The old lady was sad to see it fly away so quickly. But she looked at the ground to see what it had left there at her feet, like a little pumpkin seed. Oh, a pumpkin seed, said Mama. Thank you. I will plant the seed in my garden. Mama took the seed from the bottom of the garden and she planted the seed very carefully on the soil. Every day she watered the pumpkin seed and talked and sang to it. Lead to seed, lead to seed, I will make you strong. Lead to seed, lead to seed, I will make you strong. And as the sun shone on the seed, after a few days, the seed began to sprout. Mama was so excited when she saw the little shoot and she began to sing even more sweetly than ever before. Lead to see, lead to see, I will make you strong. The shoot grew into a vine and became a flower. Mama loved her, a pumpkin plant and she encouraged it to grow. And soon enough, the pumpkin began to grow. Mama loved her pumpkin and sang even more sweetly than before. While she waited for the pumpkin to ripen, Mama imagined all the dishes she would be able to make. Pumpkin soup, fried pumpkin, roasted pumpkin grill, pumpkin popcorn, pumpkin sweet, pumpkin stew, pumpkin pie. She couldn't wait to taste it. At last, the final day arrived and the pumpkin was ripe. Mama's mouth watered as she brought it inside to carve it out. But when Mama sliced the pumpkin, a strange thing happened. Inside, instead of a pumpkin flesh, the seed she expected, it was filled with all Mama's favorite dishes from the day when she used to eat with her family. There were hearty chicken stew with dumpling, fried chicken, fried fish, johnny cakes. There was bread food and sour soap. There was flesh of a juicy mango. Mama couldn't believe her eyes. She ate and ate and ate until her belly was full. He felt like he was about to burst. There was still plenty left in the pumpkin. So much food, Mama said. Much too much for me alone. I would take some to my neighbor. And this was what Mama did. She wrapped the rest of the special pumpkin in paper and brought it to Madame Jocelyn. I have brought you some food from my very special pumpkin, said Mama. Mama Jocelyn tore open the paper. When she saw all the food inside, she ate greedily without as much as a thank you. But Mama wasn't expecting any thanks from Mama Jocelyn, so it didn't make any difference to her. Mama was glad that the food in the pumpkin wasn't going to waste. Kids, I hope you are learning something from Mama's life. I am. Mama went home and went to bed. She talked about how the little bird had been so kind to bring her the pumpkin seed. She was thankful for her blessing. The next day, Mama woke up and looked out into her garden and found a wondrous surprise. There in the garden was another ripe pumpkin. Mama was so excited and once again, she cut the pumpkin open and saw it was full of even more of her favorite food. There was salt fish, ox stew, there was sweet potato, potatoes and Christopher pine and the sweetest passion fruit. Mama was so happy. She ate. Once again, she had been provided with a feast of a meal. She ate and ate and ate until her belly was so full that it was about to burst. Still, there was plenty of food left in the pumpkin. I'll bring the rest to Mama Jocelyn, Mama said. And just as before, she wrapped the remaining in some paper and brought it to her neighbor. Mama Justin saw Mama approaching and ran to her and snatched the food from her hands. The pumpkin you brought yesterday was so nice, she said, and ate up all the food without thank you to Mama. Mama left Madame Jocelyn snuffing the food into her mouth and smiled. She was just glad the food was not going to be wasted. Kids, we're going to stop reading the story here and hopefully next time we'll find out what happened with the rest of the story. Next time, We'll tell you the lessons we'll learn, if there is any. And we'll see you next time on Reading with John. Bye.